Uh, I grew up in Barcelona, uh, near the Gaudi Cathedral, the Sagrada Familia. I recall in the 80s, my first decade here, uh, the U.S. was in the news, in the conversation, fairly oblivious to the outside world. Uh, people were asking me um, whether Spain was in Europe or in South America. And more than once, people here, the, the U.S., uh, are much more aware uh, of the world that uh, they belong in. Seeing that your environment relates to a world that includes that pocket of the world you came from is nice, is, uh, is enriching. Uh, it lends itself to conversation and to a better integration. I was received very openly in the U.S. and always felt the, amazed at the ease with which people would uh, incorporate your um, an understanding of your needs. Uh, and the country, of course, has uh, gone through a process and is going through a process of constant self-examination. But I understand that the history of this country for hundreds of years is made of, of periods of absorbing, confronting, resolving this issue better than any other country on the face of the earth. I was scientifically inclined uh, from the beginning, yes. I was fascinated by things from nature. Uh, and, and still am. I think that I, I can have a great uh, afternoon uh, spent looking at my mineral collection or a nice couple of hours watching birds uh, in my weekend ho house in Connecticut, or admiring a botanical collection, or, uh, or hiking in the mountains. So nature has a very strong uh, appeal to me. Um, and, of course, that has a very direct link to the science and sciences of, of nature and biology was the one that took over any other. At this point, I have probably sort of converged everything I've known uh, at the service of making a difference uh, in our understanding of cancer processes. So at this point, I would say I am a cancer biologist. Over the past three decades, the field of biomedical research has seen a major convergence of many technologies, many bits of knowledge, uh, to be able to now attack problems that are uh, very important, very complex, and we have the tools to attack them. How is a disease uh, developed? How is the genetic makeup of an individual influencing the susceptibility for a disease? how the diseases that I study, uh, cancer uh, diseases and aspects such as metastases, how is that process capable of uh, developing and manifesting itself, one where a tumor initially restricted to a particular site, a prostate, a breast, uh, gains the ability to invade distant organs, vital organs, in the process that we know as metastases, and that is the cause of 90% of deaths from cancer. Those were problems that we were aware of, of course, then, but it was very, very uh, uh, far-fetched to think then that one could intervene and understand these processes. I see the first half of the 21st century as the time when cancer will be transformed into a normal disease. One that is serious, that will continue to cause, be an important cause of death, but that we are going to be relating to it the same way we now relate to heart disease, uh, uh, vascular disease, diabetes, other diseases that are serious, important, cause lots of death, but we don't view them, we don't relate to them with the same anxiety and the same fear as our relationship with cancer has, uh, has been characterized by through the end of the 20th century but then, then, then now is beginning to change. Confronting metastases um, is something that really has inspired me to keep on relating to science the same way I related to it 
as a postdoctoral fellow, as a student, with the same impetus, the same passion, because of the inspiration of the suffering caused by uh, cancer and by metastasis. I relate to it as a challenge that every day when I wake up, I want to, I want to confront. I'm tremendously fortunate to have found a way to develop creative activity. Um, would I have found a way outside of science? Maybe. I don't know. We will never know. What has stimulated these many factors? People, places, resources, luck. A fantastic set of uh, young people who came to my lab to share ideas as trainees they came, but very quickly, and by the way, many of them immigrants, like I was, they came as trainees, but many, very quickly, many of them become colleagues uh, that knew much more about certain things than I did. So um, that was an inspiration to be creative because the creativity was bouncing back and forth with other very creative minds and attitudes. These are the, it's the magic set of ingredients that make that make the experience of developing professionally in the biomedical sciences in the U.S. a place unlike, unlike any other. I do feel honestly that I am doing the best science that I am capable of. Uh, if I don't do better, it's because I am not capable of, of better. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing to, to be able to say. Follow your instinct uh, and look back, look back to see how you are tracking relative to the opportunities that have come your way. Use that to calibrate what your next steps are going to be. Uh, are you good at, at, at feeling out the mechanism by which uh, a biological process uh, unfolds? Or are you better at developing the technology that allows somebody else to figure out that biological process? Or do you really excel really at relating to patients or, uh, or users uh, of the science and respond to their needs and bring those needs to teams that are better than you are at solving them? Ask yourself these questions as you go along. At the same time, however, don't freak out. Don't have fear about any of the conventional limitations. So the funding is difficult. There are fewer positions. Yes, all of these things is true, are, are true. But you have to focus every day on doing the job of the day at hand as best you can. And if you do this day after day, you will be able to look back after a month and then after a year and then after a few years and realize that you've, you've had a pretty good a pretty good run. So do every day's job as well you can. That's my ultimate line. <laughs>